Hi there, this is Richard Walker from Lucidate. Welcome to this series of three videos on building your own generative pre-trained transformers. GPTs have become a cornerstone in the field of AI, enabling impressive results in various natural language processing tasks. In this video, we'll set ourselves the ambitious goal of building and then training a functioning GPT model in around 24 hours. And we'll be working with modest hardware, a 2020 MacBook Pro with only eight gigabytes of RAM. You'll see that we can achieve incredibly impressive results in such a short amount of time and on modest hardware. The purpose of this video series is to give you practical experience developing a language model, guiding you through the same steps you would follow in an industrial setting where you'd have access to more suitable hardware than a single notebook computer. In the next video, we'll discuss how to customize your model to take advantage of more compute power and how to build instrumentation to monitor your model's learning progress. This will allow you to experiment with different model hyperparameters for optimal deployment on more powerful hardware. Throughout this series, we'll occasionally examine Python code, mainly to demonstrate the simplicity of using libraries like Hugging Face and PyTorch to build these models. However, don't worry if you're not a programmer. This is not a Python coding tutorial. If you are interested in deep learning Python tutorials, please consider joining Lucidate as a member to gain access to members only videos covering the practical aspects of building AI using tools like PyTorch and TensorFlow. In the final video in this series of three, we'll move beyond the limitations of a single computer and explore what it takes to build an industrial scale generative pre-trained transformer. As Lucidate is primarily a capital markets consulting company, we'll use Bloomberg GPT as our prototype and examine the requirements for building a 50 billion parameter model. While you may not be able to train such a model without access to large scale computing resources, you will learn about the design decisions faced by developers of some of the world's largest and most successful AI models. So for the remainder of this video, we'll cover the steps of bringing a GPT model to life, loading data and splitting it into training and validation sets, tokenizing the training corpus, building and training the model, finally testing our trained model. So first let's start by downloading a model and a tokenizer. We'll be using the small GPT-2 decoder only model from Hugging Face and the GPT-2 tokenizer from the Hugging Face library. This is a subword tokenizer. Subword tokenization is advantageous because it strikes a balance between character level and word level tokenization, enabling the model to handle rare words and out of vocabulary tokens more effectively. We'll instantiate our model with the configuration parameters we've downloaded from Hugging Face. Next, we'll download the Wikitext 2 dataset, a collection of Wikipedia articles. We can also get this from Hugging Face, which has already split the data into training and validation sets for us. The training set will be used to train the model, while the validation set will evaluate the model's training performance. The text dataset class is very helpful here. It reads in the text file, tokenizes it using the provided tokenizer and processes the data into a format suitable for training a language model. You'll see later that we pass the tokens into a data collator class. The text dataset class understands the format that the collator wants, so we don't have to worry about formatting. Next, as we said, we take our tokens and turn them into tensors that can be passed into our model. Here we use the data collator for language modeling class, quite a mouthful. This class can take our tokenized vocabulary and produce the tensors in the format that the model requires. Once again, the heavy lifting is done for us. We don't need to understand the details of the format of tensors that the model requires. 
GPT-2 is a decoder only model. It doesn't use masked language modeling and therefore we set the MLM flag to false. With our tokenized data, we can now build and train a transformer model. We'll use the GPT-2 architecture, a decoder only model designed for text generation. GPT-2 features a multi-layer transformer architecture consisting of self-attention layers, positional encoding, and layer normalization. In this example, we're using a small version of GPT-2, but you can scale up to larger models if you have more computational resources. When training the model, hyperparameters like the learning rate, batch size, and the number of training epochs play a crucial role in determining the model's performance. Experimenting with these hyperparameters can help you optimize your model for best results. Don't be afraid to fiddle with the dials. We'll delve deeper into this topic in the next video. We pass the model, the tokenized data, the collated tensors, and the training parameters to a training class. And once again, Hugging Face takes care of all of the coordination. We send a message to the training class to train the model. And once that's done, we can retrieve the results from the trainer object with the evaluation function. On my hardware and with these parameters, training takes around 24 hours. Once complete, we can compute the model's perplexity on the validation set. Perplexity is a measure of how well the model can predict the next token in the sequence. Lower perplexity values indicate better performance. In the next video, we'll look at further measures beyond perplexity. Finally, we'll use the trained model to generate text based on user-provided input. This will demonstrate how our model can be used for creative text generation tasks. So how does it work? Frankly, not at all bad. Now, let's be clear, with only 24 hours training on such modest hardware, you shouldn't expect to be competing with OpenAI's chat GPT. But the results are grammatically correct and reasonably coherent. If you play around with some of these hyperparameters, you'll get dramatically varied results. Generally speaking, with low numbers, you tend to get more predictable, somewhat vanilla output. But if you crank these numbers up, you can get some wildly unpredictable and frankly flamboyant responses. In this video, we've shown you how to build a hobby scale transformer for text generation using the Hugging Face library and PyTorch. To recap without the code, the Hugging Face libraries do a lot of the heavy lifting for us. We can get a default model configuration and an off-the-shelf tokenizer. We can retrieve a blank GPT transformer architecture and configure it with a standard config. There are even some cleaned datasets to use, which we can tokenize and then repurpose the tokenized data into tensors suitable to train the model. We can provide some training parameters and then train and test the model. So, in this video, we've seen the GPT-2 architecture, we've seen tokenization techniques and the training process. With this knowledge, you can build your own text generation or translation models or explore other applications of transformers. In future videos, we'll explore how to use these principles to create industrial scale transformers that require more data and computational resources. Stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe or hit the join button to explore Lucidate's membership tiers for more tutorials on transformers and machine learning.